Well, welcome back to the shed. It's been ages since I've done a video, to be fair. Um, I teach I teach engineering, uh, I teach from home. So it, that's, that's just taken up so much of my time. Uh, homeschooling my boy. Um, he's obviously needs to do his stuff as well. And I just haven't had time to get out on that. I've actually had more time on the BMX and the BMX isn't mine, it's my boys. Um, and it's just been a nightmare really, I just haven't had time studying for a masters, teaching, teaching the boy and it, I, everybody right now is just miserable in lockdown and trying to survive and keep themselves, I don't know, entertained in one way or another. So this video it's it's not really a review of, of I've bought a toolkit. It's not a review of the toolkit as such. It's just showing you the the toolkit that I've bought and just explaining a little bit more about the company I bought it off, Barco, which I didn't realise were owned by Snap On. But uh, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. Look forward to doing more videos soon. See you soon. So, um, I decided to invest in a moderately expensive socket and spanner set, uh, this one here. I wasn't sure to go down the snap-on line or not, or if you even need to. Um, so over Christmas I decided to purchase a set. Um, there's so many different socket sets and spanner sets out there. I decided upon um, this 138, 138 socket and spanner um, offering from um, Barco. And I actually looked into the company uh, a little more after um, after I received this because, um, to be honest, I was really, really impressed with the quality of the products. And I hadn't heard a lot about Barco, to be fair. I've seen the brand around, but I hadn't heard too much about it. Um, but after I received this kit and feeling the quality of, of the stuff, you know, the weight of it, um, the quality of the steel, I thought I'd have a look into it and I found out that um, Barco is a Swedish brand um, basically in the uh, the hand tool industry. They're actually acquired by a company, SNA Europe, which owns Snap-on. Um, Barco started in the late 1800s. At, um, they started with innovations such as the pipe wrench and the modern ad adjustable wrench. Um, I think it was 1886 when Barco began. Um, it was a, a Swedish inventor called Johan Petter Johansson um, who started it in 1853 and he established his company uh, Eon Scherpings, um, Eon Scherpings Mechanisk Oviesko, it basically means mechanical workshop in Sweden and um, you know he was, a, he was a, an inventor um, known as JP, he was an inventor and an industrialist um, he invented actually the modern plumber wrench and the uh, adjustable wrench that we all know and he got the patents on them or Barco did or become, to become Barco. Um, but then in the, in the sort of mid 1919 snap-on um, actually uh, entered the European market and they acquired um, a, Spanish, a Spanish company, a tool company. Her uh, Euro Tools, Herramientas Euro Tools or something. Anyway, they acquired them, um, and they also acquired the business area um, from Sandvik um, Saws and Tools. And then they named the company Barco Group, Barco Group AB. And they had about two and a half thousand employees back then. Um, but in 1999, Barcon was acquired by Snap-on um, from Wisconsin, USA. As you know, Snap-on are one of the biggest tool companies in the world. Um, I think they were founded back in 1920. Uh, but they had the same visions as Barco, see? Um, and that was to develop tools, um, making the job easier, um, faster, safer, um, for professional people, I guess. At that time, Barco was the premier tool manufacturer in Sweden. Um, and they, they merged, um, bought Sandvik, and that's where the fish logo comes from, the um, the Barco fish logo. Um, and as far as, as far as I know, um, none of Barco's um, production now resides in Sweden at all, anything at all. 
I've also seen a number of Barco's um, players that are made in France. Um, since Snap-on bought um, Barco, their manufacturing has been sort of splintered a little bit more. Um, there is um, there is USA Barco merchandise, but I think that's coming out of the Williams plant in um, Atlanta, I think it is. Um, but sadly, I don't know, do I say sadly or not? I've also seen Baco, Taiwan and China. Um, but the stuff that I saw was only in like gardening tools. Um, but the story goes that they tried a broader push. So um, Baco tried a broader push of their tool line into England and America and it sort of flopped. Um, and that's why there was a flood um, a few years ago, there was a flood of Barco merchandise on the on the market. But after looking at this and after buying this, I think the quality is absolutely great. Um, I think the prices that they were asking back then for the stuff was too high, um, especially for a tool company um, that no one had really heard of. I think you, I think Barco has become a bit more of a popular brand now, but the prices are right now. Um, so it begs the question, is Barco just another sort of fodder brand of snap-on, you know? Um, from what I can see, a lot of the stuff is made in China and Taiwan. Uh, I, I had a look actually about this, and it, it, it says it's actually made in China. Um, the only things that you might find that are an exception are the pliers and the cutting tools, um, which I think are being made in Spain. And they're making their way into the US from Europe from what I read. Um, but it's not really hard to find sets and sockets for cheap um, on eBay. They're all over eBay. Um, but I suppose it depends on the quality of what you're looking for. But in my opinion, these, these tools now are priced, they're priced right for where they're coming from. Um, it, this come from China. So, you know, but I cannot fault the quality of this. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure, um, how that was produced or what's going on with that but you know if you if you find any Barco tools made in Sweden then hang on to them because um, they hold their value and the quality of those tools um, I believe is far better than any of the stuff that coming out of Spain or China and Taiwan even though it all looks identical um, which, which it would do it's been manufactured to the same specs um, but um, Barco today it's not what it, it's not what it what, what it was what it used to be. Um, if we're talking about the old Barco tools back from say 1940s to the 1980s, um, you know they are our equivalent to the Snap-ons and other sort of top quality tools from that era. Um, starting in the 60s already, they gradually sort of out, outsourced the production to lower cost countries, which is what happens. You know today the saws, or I think most of the saws. Um, they're about the only thing that are made in Sweden now, just saws, uh, saw blades. Um, but to be fair, seeing Barco labelled wrenches and merchandise at DIY stores, I just, it's a bit sad really, it's a bit of a sad story because you only sort of see, not the Draper's bad, but you, you know, you see Draper at DIY stores. And we had the tools, we had the talent. Um, but the last move was the production of the, um, Swedish made. Um, some have been made in Germany and France for many years, but the um, the pliers, um, the adjustables, the screwdrivers, and the pipe wrenches, um, they went off to Southern Europe um, just a few years ago, and then and then SNA Europe, who now owns Baco and Snap On, um, <laughs> apparently they got big taxpayer money from the EU for uh, for the move. Yes. Look what I found in my pocket. Look, a year's salary right here. You know what I call them? Fun coupons. See that? A fun coupon. Grandfather. It's not the kind of um, happenings that Swedish politicians would talk too loudly about, but I think that's what happened. I think they got a bit of a bit of a deal there for outsourcing stuff to Europe, which is fair enough, I guess. Um, but. Um, you know, I guess nothing, nothing's been the same in Sweden. Um, but if you're talking about Barco sockets and accessories, you know, 
it's hard to generalise um, as there's at least two totally different grades of stuff floating around from what I've read and that's the grades of the metal some of it's quite nice um, some of this, some of their stuff claims to uh, incorporate some of the features of Snap-on um, uh, and they may well do I don't own any Snap-on stuff so I don't know the finish is nice it's, it's gunmetal it's gunmetal grey um, or it's a polished chrome and customers from what I've read seem to be generally satisfied from the reviews um, I know a few mates um, who have some back stuff and they actually do swear by the quality and even the stuff that's coming out of China um, or Spain um, and, and I do I, I you know I've had a good look at this and it, this is good kit as with most most tools though, you know if you're thinking about acquiring tools you know, use your eyes, check what you're getting. Um, as for the rest of the Baco line, the Swedish stuff um, of about a decade ago, uh, you know, that was clearly decent stuff. It's, it's, you can actually buy it on eBay now. A lot of people keeping hold of that stuff, but it's decent stuff. But, you know, that production's been moved, moved elsewhere now. Um, a lot of people argue online that the Baco stuff, the quality has suffered since then. Um... You know, even their legendary Baco adjustable wrench, which they patented, that's even now made in Spain. Um, but they're not, you know, they're not bad wrenches. Um, no better or worse than any other Spanish adjustable or probably any other adjustable, to be fair. And probably absolutely fine for what they're needed for. Um, you know, they're not going to be the quality of the Swedish back from the 1940s, are they? I mean, nothing ever is, is it? Um, manufacturing's changed a lot now. Um... But anyway, I searched online, um, I searched this topic in Swedish and I thought that a local paper uh, might have made a story about the demise of Baco and actually they did. Um, and it was from a paper um, that was published in 2007 in uh, June, 28th of June. And by my, or Google's humble translation, um, it reads, uh, it tells you about the last, um, a, a, the last wrench has, has left the factory, basically. The Baco works um, um, because the company's been renamed and taken over. And it was quite a sad read, actually, um, looking at all the photos as well. It just said that today, you know, Friday, all production of tools have ceased in the legendary building of um, N, N Copping or whatever the factory was in Swedish. Baco Tools was acquired by Sandvik in 1991 and passed on to the American-owned Snap-on in 1999. Um, in 2006, the message was given that the production in the factory will stop uh, and, the, and the, the same year, the company name was changed from Baco to SNA Europe. And then, you know, real sad in engineering, they start to disassemble the shop um, and the disassembly of the drop forge, the presses, the machines, you know, that, that, that all begins. And in 2006, um, it was in 2006 that the, that the factory just stood empty. And, you know, it's quite a sad story, really. And by then, like 100 trucks loaded with machines and goods literally have been transferred to Spain. And they all went to Spain back then. Um, and that's where they said the production will continue. Still with the brand Baco, um, pressed into the die, obviously, um, but made in Spain, not made in Sweden. And that goes back to the, was there a, a, a money incentive there? Well, of course there was. Um, but basically, the factory in Sweden produced 115 million wrenches that were manufactured before the business was closed down in 2007. For 120 years, the company had operated in the city you know, of massive importance to everyone that lives there. And it was a, a, a name, wasn't it? A big name. Um, but that's what happened to Baco in a nutshell. They're still around, but the manufacturing is now coming out of other countries. Production moved from Sweden to lower wages in Southern Europe, Russia, apparently, China now. Um, but all I can say is this kit, this kit is of decent quality. Um, and it's priced right for me too, for what it is. The metal used and the mechanisms on the wrenches are sturdy. They don't feel cheap. Um, 
but longevity is another thing and obviously only time will tell you know this is going to become my main set now probably for my work now going forward any work I do on any of my bikes I'm just going to see how we get on but only time will tell how these tools stand up really but for me for the money Barco seem a decent brand you know even if they are being manufactured in Spain or even China time will tell but I don't know whether that's a bad thing or not um it all depends on the production processes and the steel and lots of other things but we'll see so there you go a little history of Barco thanks for watching